Welcome to episode 13 of the Joyful Miles podcast, the podcast that is all about enjoying life one mile at a time. I'm your host, Rob, and joining us this week, we have Laura. Hi, everyone. And Megan. Hello. And Jackie. Hi, everyone. And we're going to be joined by a couple of very special guests this week um, who ran some of the Tinkerbell Half Marathon weekend uh, races uh, this past weekend in Disneyland. And uh, before we get to that, um, the, speaking of Tink, a big story that came out this week was um, the fact that there was a bib thief that was caught. <laughs> Quite the story that made the rounds. Um, and I just wanted to know, what is everybody's opinions on that? Because this seemed to be the hot topic of the week. Girl I'll has, tell you what. Girl has a pair. That's all I'm going to say. Girl has that's, a pair. That's exactly right. <laughs> wow. Well, and when you... And, and you can in the in the dawn of social media, man, there is nothing that can't be uncovered, and that's kind of what I tell my kids all the time. Don't put it out there in the universe because it never goes away. Even though, because people took all kinds of screenshots, so even though she deleted her pages and things like that, it's there. It even got picked up by the the marathon cheater guy. I saw that craziness. So I mean, Nicole, Nicole, were you aware of all this while you were there? Do you keep up or do you just enjoy your vacation? Um, I became aware of it once I went home. And so I was really shocked by it just because the majority of the people you meet running at these races are the nicest people. And so she just kind of gave a bad name for herself and she just made herself look really bad. Totally. Yeah, so for those who don't really know the story, essentially a woman, and this isn't her first time doing it apparently, uh, basically steals somebody else's bib. She pretends to be them. However she does it, if she gets a fake ID or they just don't really care and she finds out somebody that you know hasn't shown up yet, gets her bib and runs the race under that person's name. Mm-hmm. And for something like a Run Disney race, that's a big deal because these are not cheap races to run. Uh, and do we know which races, was it all the races or was it just one? Do we know? I know well, from my okay. understanding, she didn't show up. She did not show up for the half marathon, no. apparently. Okay. Which was a good idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This story but, took off like wildfire. And the thing is, she didn't just like show up inconspicuously. Like she had a full costume. She's she's mm-hmm. been prepping to do this. Yeah. I mean, that I found. And she kind posted of her costume on her Instagram piece, and and then I think somehow she she ran something. Even Dark Side. Did she run part of Dark Side? Yeah. I think even too, but she was. She was only registered for one race, but I think there's, I mean, she's been a lot of different people. I don't know if she's trying out who she wants to be, but she's been a lot of people. And it's not just run Disney races. She's done this for, like, the Los Angeles Marathon and a lot of different races. Yeah, Surf City. And I'd have to ask, it's interesting. I mean, we've talked about it before, how people will you know, cheat during the race, like they won't run the whole race. Last year we were following this story during Marathon Weekend where people were tracking down these people that jumped on the monorail after starting. And, you know, we could talk about the ethics of that, but this is actually stealing somebody's spot Mm. and, you know, and and, and going to great lengths to do it. So am I alone in thinking that it's kind of (laughs) crazy that you're going to steal somebody's identity and spot to run a race? Like it... it, Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. It's insane to me, right? And the bibs, for those of you who don't know, like they have your name right mm-hmm. on it. So her name is, its if you know her, if she's your friend, it's very clear that it does not say her name underneath it. So, I, you know, it's like, doesn't and, and she? And she knows that whoever, like there's photograph, there's photographers like everywhere along the course that load all these pictures up on the internet. You're smiling Anyone for them. Anyone see that number. It's like. Did you well, seriously plus, think you're going to get away with it? Well, she did for 2016, Tink, apparently. So, mm-hmm. I mean, this she is, like I said, this is the first time. Facebook she... group. Sorry, Rob. She was in the same Facebook group as the person she stole the bid right. from. Oh, I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Yeah, as they were yes. in the, the big one. I was in a group with the girl who had her bib stolen. And so that was the first post I saw was from the person who had her bib stolen. Right. But I've I'm seen pretty- that, too. Yeah, I'm just shocked that she picks these huge races. It's not like she's stealing from local small races. They're all big ones. Right, right. Well, and then, you know, to, if you're that person that stole the bib, they're just going to look for the person that had your bib and be able to track him down somehow, eventually, I would think. Like, I, I, it's amazing to me that she could get away with it as long as she did. Is she just finding people that she knows somehow, like, going in advance that aren't going to go? Or I mean, 
think about it. If you like, if you're in one of those really large groups and people have said, you know, I haven't trained or, you know what, I can't get rid of my bib. I'm not going to be there. That's, that may be the person that's targeted, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's obviously people say, Oh, who's in this group and who's in this tink group or who's in this princess group. And she's going and targeting them. Probably in the past, she might've gone as people who said they weren't going to show up. So it wouldn't have been a huge deal. I hope they, she got him a good time. I'm sorry, that was just so inappropriate. I, I, well, that's true. I, I think we also talk about like the, the, you know security before raise. Like we don't, you're not supposed to show your bib, uh, your bib number, things like that, right? But I mean, for run Disney races, I've always had to show show an ID, right? Yes. So I, I have to wonder, are, you know, is this something that they're not looking at IDs, or does she? You think she's making IDs of these people too? I think that they, maybe she goes at a busy time. They're just glancing. Mm, okay, mm. it's you. I mean, both girls had dark hair. Of course, Not she that knew the person who was checking her in. in. I mean, you never know. Or never that's my other thing. Does she have a connection at the big pickup? Right. So knowing everything we do about Disney and how they love to overreact to stuff, what do we think is going to happen as a reaction uh, from Monday? Fingerprints. <laughs> Blood tests and DNA swabs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, from what I understand is Run Disney has not yet responded to, I mean, granted, there have been a lot of people who said they've sent emails and all kinds of things. Um, I think they probably, A, need to digest and come to a consensus what they're going to do. But the thing is, the chicks never registered under her name. And I don't know if, you know, if I were her, I mean, there's so many people looking looking for her. I mean, it's kind of, they, people, I mean... Bib cheating is one thing to run under somebody else's name, but to physically steal it and make a conscious decision to do that, mm. people aren't going to take kindly to that. I get annoyed, Even if too, she did get a good time. I would love, I mean, we just were in Broad Street, and anybody can pick up anybody's bib at Broad Street, right? Right. And, you know, I, would, I always said that I would love it if Run Disney would allow us to be able to pick up other people's bibs. Well, I guess, I guess that's pretty much guaranteed that's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> nope. And, but and you know the interest. That? The interesting part is, you know, when I ran, when Caitlin ran the 10K, I was standing in a line and I had someone, we were trying to be swift and have Caitlin go with my friend to go pick up the bib. They wouldn't let, because I had signed the waiver, they wouldn't let her pick up the bib for Caitlin, even though she was a minor. So I just think some are more stringent and that might've been Florida, but she's, I think she's probably done it in Florida too. Mm. I don't know if she did. It was. I, it might have been light side, and I was actually wondering because California, just in nature, tends to be a little more chill and laid back. And it's, I yes. actually felt like when we did even the Dumbo Double Dare, the whole vibe was very more, much more relaxed mm-hmm. than I felt run Disney on in Florida. So we'd have to. I'd have to look and see if it was light side or dark side because I knew. I know it was one of the Star Wars ones, but I'm not sure which. And I, and I don't know off the top of my head which one it was. But we also oh, had yeah. the change where it was wasn't volunteers working the expo too. It was paid uh, labor. So were they not as astringent? Were they not as careful? So who knows? Yeah. And the other piece I read somewhere, you know, so I'm not sure. I can't verify it all. I probably should have done that before we got on the on the call. But is that Run Disney in California isn't the same? operated necessarily by the same business so they're both under run disney for the big business unit but apparently california as of i forget if it was 2015 or 2016 is operated by a different group or head underneath the run disney umbrella i think you're right because i think isn't that why they they want a different announced team out there that's why rudy i i think so but they're they're definitely different i read that and it was well, it, it was verified by Facebook, so of course it has to be true. But the um, the interesting part of that is I, I think somebody else who's close to it said, yes, it did change, so the, the management's different. So I don't know if – I mean, it's still under the umbrella, but obviously it's different. I think the interesting thing about the story, too, is um, she used it on her, on her personal Instagrams and stuff with hashtags like, yes, I pay for these things or something like that. <laughs> like really attention to the fact that you know about all the money she spends to run these races when apparently she's not spending a dime. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's a costume. Except for the costume. Yeah. It's a lot of money. 